Hello, everyone. Uh, uh, my name is Anuj, and I will be uh, taking this training for for this group. And uh, uh, it's so great that everyone has taken time out to <laughs> on a weekend to learn something. Uh, so I'm going to turn my video on. So I at least feel there's somebody <laughs> around me, even if it's me. Uh, so I'm just thinking I will just minimize. Yeah, OK. All right, so we'll start. And I think we have 24 attendees already, so which is which is great. And I think we expect a little more uh, you know, crowd to be a little bit more bigger. Uh, and that's that's great. So all right, so I'm hiding the control panel, hiding the window. OK. So we are uh, going to learn basics on Tableau. Uh, when I say basics, um, I'm going to cover a lot of things which are needed to start uh, using Tableau or understand uh, what Tableau is, what it can do, how does it fit in organization? Uh, is this really you know, helpful you know, or is this really, really useful to learn? Uh, all those things, but uh, when uh, but the advanced topics uh, can also be will also be covered. But I think uh, uh, those are the things which which come by practice uh, than just uh, you know than, than just you know uh, getting a theoretical understanding of the subject. So, but but you know through this uh, training program, we'll open all those gateways. At least we'll get everyone thinking about. Uh, those topics and you know everyone will have a different level of understanding because some may come from SQL background may find it easier than others some may be very good with Excel uh, some may be familiar with Power BI or some may be familiar with lots of other data analytics and data engineering uh, products so they may find some similarities uh, with this product and uh, you know and then uh, you know you always have uh, you know provision to ask questions. You know I think write your questions. Uh, so whenever you want me to answer something, just type in, and I think uh, we'll respond uh, as soon as we can. Uh, so I'm moving on to the slide. This is just a little bit about me. So uh, my name is once again my name is Anuj, and I work in Pampton as BI Analytics Lead. Uh, I'm currently working for an insurance uh, uh, client uh, where I'm providing uh, different kinds of BI and analytics services, uh, which include Tableau, Power BI, ServiceNow, Workday, uh, you know, reporting, lots of reporting areas. And the skill set we, you know, I primarily use is, is very heavily uh, focused on Tableau, uh, you know, Python and SQL. And uh, you know lots of lots of other tools which we you know from which we which a typical bigger organization bigger insurance organization will is likely to use. Uh, so uh, with that, we'll move to the next deck. So let's understand why are we here. <laughs> yeah, uh, you know weekends are hard for everyone, but uh, I myself didn't want to be here. But then uh, I think with Corona virus thing in a, you know in the picture, everyone wanted to use their time uh, to the best they can. So that's when we talked about that how we can uh, pull up a, pull up some trainings on uh, different products which our associates in Pampton uh, you know are expert in or know about. So I think it's one of the you know one of the training programs in that series. Uh, we already had I believe Salesforce training and which was fantastic. I'm sure many people have learned uh, a lot about Salesforce administration. Uh, well, uh, you know, even Tableau since last year, uh, I think since last year sometime, it became a Salesforce company. So it's actually, uh, uh, you know, it's actually, you know, uh, great because now even Salesforce is trying to, uh, you know, use Tableau or implement Tableau at many of its customers um, already. And it was, a, it was one of the major tech, you know, uh, uh, partnerships actually. So in this training, we are going to cover uh, what resources we have for at our disposal and how we can use them to learn Tableau, why, 
how and what on Tableau. Uh, what actually is a dashboard? You know, a lot of people just, just talk about, I need this dashboard, that dashboard. What actually is that? And and more, 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 you know, just to be more clear, it's not just what is a dashboard, what is a right dashboard or what is the correct dashboard? Uh, and then reports, uh, you know, people use, and, and we want to make a clear distinction how report differentiates from a dashboard and you know and then how do you use these dashboards to tell the stories and then with any any reporting product like you know it could be uh anything even other than tableau so you have the primary the 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 overview of the whole uh, ecosystem is that you have certain data in the organization and now you want to see you want to you want to find some insights into that data and then when you find those insights you want to really publish it at a place where organization and, and 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 its people can consume it and and then you want to be careful about uh how they consume it and who consumes it so all that will come in the whole ecosystem of you know tableau which is a you know a big uh data visualization and data analytics platform uh, I know there are a lot of people use these words interchangeably, and uh, we will have an opportunity in the slide deck to cover some of the terms which are specific to Tableau and, and BI in general. Uh, then, so we will be talking about data cleanup, you know, how we combine the data, and we'll be talking about what are different, different charting options we have in Tableau, and some of the advanced charting techniques we have in Tableau, and uh, lots of ways you can aggregate how easy it is, uh, you know, then how difficult it can get with the, with the problem at hand. Uh, and then we also going to get into the, you know, writing different calculations in Tableau. Um, you're getting user, how do you get a user input in Tableau? You, you, you we're going to see some concepts called filters, sets, groups, and all those things. This will all come, you know, as we dive further. Then we're also going to see some map interactions. Uh, like, for example, you want to know that, you know, for a certain, for organization X, how are the sales across the you know different uh, states or different countries, for example? And then you have uh, you know advanced analytics uh, concepts for on statistical analysis. And uh, I will also try to you know just for the sake of interest of the group, I think there may be some R programmers, Python programmers in this group. So I will also tell that uh, I will also you know give some outline on how people use. Uh, and you know these kind of languages in conjunction with the Tableau, and how these things. So with with so many languages, so many so many products, so many uh, you know data sources. How all these things really? You know what's the best combination of these uh, you know these tool sets? So we'll talk about that as well. And then of course you know uh, for for this class, you know I'm 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 going to give a story, and we're going to do that story. In Tableau, uh, it's going to be a small problem. We all going to solve it, uh, uh, you know. After we understand the basics today, and then I think tomorrow I will dedicate the entire session on, you know, on doing it together. Okay. All right. So some of the things which we uh, in in Tableau's world are, you know, Tableau Desktop. Tableau Server, Tableau Mobile, Tableau Prep, Tableau Public, and there are many, there are a host of new complement products. So as you can see on the, you know, on the, on the slide, there's a link. Uh, and I, I intentionally did not provide it earlier because this trial is only for 14 days. So right now, those who are on the computers, they can uh, go to this link. Uh, which is on the screen and start downloading the Tableau desktop. Uh, and while you download and install, uh, we will continue with the slides actually. It's gonna be very quick. So this is the link, uh, sign up with your email ID, you will get a 14 days trial. Uh, this will be helpful after maybe five or six slides uh, when we start looking at the interface of Tableau. Uh, I will take a pause here and, and ask Mahesh if there are any questions on this slide, especially if, you know, on downloading and everything, yeah. Hi, Anuj. Uh, right now, I don't see any questions uh, posted. Yeah. So uh, just, uh, I think, I think it would, it would just make sense. I post this link on. Uh, uh, 
yeah one more quick thing uh, i see that one of the attendees has raised their hands it would mm -hmm. be great if you guys can type in your question so that i can you know pass the question on to anuj so that he can answer it thank you yeah hope everybody is able to get to that link and uh, is able to find that uh, so we are what we are talking we're downloading is tableau desktop okay oh, anuj uh, sorry to stop you i just got the question from one of the attendees mm -hmm. the question is is there any free version for personal use uh okay yes there is a free version which is very very limited it's called tableau public that's for personal use but if you are considering uh, getting into, you know, adding this in your profile and you know, getting into, you know, showing, uh, trying to earn some points on, you know, like you have really done something in Tableau, it would always be Tableau Desktop. Tableau Desktop and Tableau Server is what organizations use. Personal versus is Tableau Public, and where the uh, features would be very, very limited. But you can do that. I will tell you when we do when we use Tableau Public, that will come, you know, uh, during the course of this training. But for now, we are looking at Tableau Desktop. Thank you, Anush. That was the only question so far. OK, so I just want to you know, check to the group that is everyone able to download it? Anyone who's facing any issue in finding it? Or... Yep. It should be very straight. It should be like you know, three clicks. That's all. Just, just like go to meeting. Okay, all right. So while the download and installation is on, you can keep listening to some of these slides. Oh, it's just... And uh, if you can't focus on the Tableau as subject, at least focus on these lines. So since we are here, let's be done with it. We have taken some time out in the weekend, so let's just make use of it. Uh, and then, well, what, what, why, and how in Tableau? I mean, learn these so you could at least <laughs> nod confidently in a data meeting. So even if you were not, you 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 know, we like not all of us uh, get to you know learn or practice uh, you know as much as we ex we expect everyone to be uh, doing it. Uh, but at least at least know these terms so that you know so that it's uh, it's useful in when when we have these kind of reporting discussions or analytics discussion. And and you know, just at the background, you know, Salesforce has been a you know has been a leader in you know, in BI and data visualization space for 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 many years now, and uh, it's it's very popular. And especially from hiring perspective, uh, you know, you will, I mean, the average salaries and the number of opportunities are huge in this uh, you know skill set actually. So you know, I would say that you know, even if we don't practice. Uh, so much at least we know the concepts well so that we can we can because some may be working at the etl developer they don't have to really know thoroughly you know about about tableau but at least they know the concept then they will find it easier to work with tableau of course actually so anyways so data I, I know a lot of people say big data small data medium data and all those terms actually so for for you know for me and and especially for for tableau uh, as a product it's all about data. So Tableau lets you connect to any data source. For most popular data sources, like say Hadoop, say SQL, say uh, Google Sheets, say Spreadsheet, say CSV, say uh, AWS, uh, Azure, uh, for all these, there are ready-made connector in Tableaus. We can always utilize them. If there is no, and you can also use some kind of web crawling, like web, web data connectors. You can use, um, uh, even custom JDBC, ODBC connections, and uh, and there. Are, then again, there. Are, when you have very specific sources, you can always define your services, and and, and you can you can consume them in, in Tableau. So there are a lot of connect connectors available at our disposal by default, uh, and you can always build your connectors. So how does Tableau fit into the ecosystem of um, 
organization. So generally, uh, you know, from my experience, I can see that, uh, you know, some people even call these Tableau folks as, uh, you know, data scientists, data analysts, PI uh, professionals, all these works. So essentially, gen uh, you, what happens is generally there's a team called, say, data science or uh, data intelligence or market intelligence team where you will have certain folks who will be doing, uh, you know, R programming, uh, Python programming, somebody will be doing ETL work, somebody will be doing anal analyzing that work, using spreadsheet or something. And then what happens is that whether it's data scientist or analyst or anything, if you have done some work, if you have done some analysis, unless this can be used easily, unless it can be seen easily, unless a decision can be taken based on this, uh, it's of no use. So, uh, you know, Tableau is the, is the layer which actually sits on top of all the data work we do. So ultimately, like for example, ETL developers, they will be moving data from different systems. They'll be bringing lots of data from other different sources all the time. But what happens is the job from organization leadership perspective is not done unless we are able to use that data. And when you say use the data, are we able to analyze it? Are we able to see insights in the data? Uh, so that's where Tableau comes into picture. It sits on top of all this. So every major team, at least I have seen, will have uh, a Tableau or uh, you know, expert where, you know, they will, uh, where this will be, uh, be, Tableau will be the way to publish the uh, insights or publish the report to, to the leadership where they can see uh, and take a decision actually easily because they, leadership is not data scientists. Leadership is folks with business and they just need things easily and f in, in, the, in the fastest way possible. And then you have concepts like data analytics, which is again, you know, uh, you know, trying to find out if certain product is not selling in one ge one geography, what's the reason? Which product is not selling? What uh, and is there is, is there a certain category of product which is not performing? Can, what can we do to that category? Are, is our profit improving? Is our profit ratio improving for uh, for certain segments? So all these kind of questions, which are very common uh, in business, I'm just giving some basic examples here, just for the sake of you know, you know just to match you know, varying background we may have in this crowd. Uh, so, uh, and so these are the questions which, which, which try to answer using Tableau. And then the space, the space which is, which has been new because uh, there was a time like maybe eight years back when people were talking about reports all the time, like BO and lots of other products, like MicroStrategy and lots of other th things actually. But the times have changed now. The space is called, uh, m very popularly known as visual analytics now. And visual analytics is now uh, is the way that uh, you know five second five second rules. So as soon as you see the dashboard in five second, user should know what this dashboard is trying to tell us. That's what all of us strive to do in Tableau. And then I'm I'm writing data governance because uh, because what happens is you can write lots of reports, you can mail them, data can be leaked uh, in Tableau. The Tableau server especially has an ecosystem where you have permission controls, you have which group can see what, and which user can see what information in dashboard. For example, you have a user from East region should not be seeing uh, you know, sales of West region, and it's the same dashboard. So you can always with the security, uh, you know, you, uh, by utilizing the security features in Tableau, you can always uh, configure dashboard in such a way that that a specific set of information is available only to a specific set of users. So these are the things which we do and we, we complement the whole data governance or data security uh, yes, uh, ecosystem of the organization. And, and that the last question is very interesting. Why not MS Excel or Power BI or Click? Oh, okay, so Excel, it does not refresh on its own unless you script it. Other thing that, it takes a while. Not everybody can really read into rows and, and, and columns. It's not easy. And especially someone who has a, only if, you know, who, who's just at an executive position and they want to take a decision fast, they're not going to work on your spreadsheet. They just want to see something very fast and something very intuitive, something very interactive. Uh, uh, you know, so that's when uh, you know, Tableau comes into picture. And Power BI is another major, uh, major competitor in the market. Uh, you know, and I work on, I do lots of projects on Power BI also. So I have seen the, both the products very closely and they're the, they the two which are uh, de facto leaders, uh, at least uh, as of this year. 
Click is also one uh, major player in the market. But comparing Power BI with the Tableau is, Power BI is excellent product if your data is not clean enough. If you want to do lots of data manipulation, data wrangling, then that's when Power BI is very helpful. But when it comes to visualization, Tableau is the product. I mean, it 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 in my experience, it beats any other product, you know, hands down actually. So for visualization and and that's and and visualization is such a key aspect, but that's where your work is seen and is shown to people. So that becomes very critical. Uh, like my my client for now uses all maybe various products, but Tableau is the biggest, uh, you know, uh, probably uh, implementation uh, we have in organization right now. So I hope the desktop is getting installed and everybody is able to arrive at this screen. You know, the screen after you install, after you launch, this is how you see the screen. I'm just showing it uh, sneakily sometimes while we talk uh, so that, you know, that, you know, I just want to make sure that installation is going on. The next slide. All right, let's move on. Uh, who, use, who uses it, who are the users for it, and how they use it. So what we do is we get the data from different sources, we build the dashboards in Tableau, we publish it on Tableau server, and uh, you know, uh, you know, it could be a marketing team, it could be HR team, it could be finance, it could be executive office, it could be any, any group which may be using it. Uh, and so now, it's important to understand when you when you do something and expose it to a user who are not in your team, you're actually doing it for somebody else. So you have to design something which they can understand. So it's just like uh, how a movie is made. So a dashboard which does not have the right story to tell fails, just like a movie which does not have the right plot fails. So that's this is a very key. I mean, if you ever decide to uh, take this uh, take Tableau seriously and uh, really want to have this uh, add, as an added skill in the profile. This is very important because in a lot of interviews, people will focus on not just what, so everybody can design, everybody can click on file, save, and everybody can get the data and filter and map and all those things. But, but the important is to understand the business. And when I say business, understand your audience. And when you say audience, then the next thing is that what this audience wants to see. So that's where the story is. So are you trying to tell help them that uh, you know to find uh, you know least profitable products? Is that the story you're trying to tell them? Then if you're saying that, you should be finding those least profitable products in different categories, different segments. You may be saying that a least product, least profitable product is A, but maybe that was least profitable only in summer, not in fall and winter. So all these things, you know, these things will come. You should, we should always be focused on, we avoid, a lot of people accidentally design and especially when they're beginning the design dashboard. And actually, instead of helping the user, it misleads the user. So we don't want to avoid this. So for you, for you, for a dashboard developer, it is very, very important that they know the story, what they're trying to tell. Okay, all right. Very basic slide. Uh, I just, you know, I, I designed my slides, uh, you know, very light because I think the interaction is more important than the slide itself. Uh, and then, so these are three three basic pillars of any analytics, um, uh, you know, project or product. So get the data. Where's the data? You will have lots of questions on the data. Uh, and then build the dashboard. Publish the dashboard. Get the data. It could be SQL. It could be it could be Excel. It could be anything. Build dashboard. This is where Tableau Desktop comes in. You know, I'm just trying to map it to everyone. Now build that. This is where Tableau Desktop will come. You will build uh, your dashboard using Tableau Desktop. Where will you publish it? On Tableau Server. Tableau Server is the place where you publish it. Okay. All right. Uh, Mahesh, is there a way to check like if everyone uh, is doing fine with the installation? Uh, I mean, uh, all they can do is just type in the type okay. in their answers. Okay. If anyone is still, uh, you know, finding it hard to install, can chat, can send question or what problem they're facing. Okay. So some basic concepts in Tableau. 
uh, we will have, I think some people will have SQL background, they will just relate it to it instantly. So what happens is you have, say for example, you have your product table. Product table has all the product records, like product one, sales, metadata about it, then you have orders table. So like in Amazon, you order products, and then you have your order IDs. You have product IDs and order IDs. So this could be two different tables. This can be joined in Tableau. You can, so the, in Tableau, there's a provision to join multiple tables. You can join tables from Oracle to tables in Microsoft SQL. So there's a cross database join feature in Tableau. There is a, of course, regular join. You have all the options of different kinds of join as you do in SQL, you can do it here. But, uh, and Tableau recommends using Tableau's way of designing the data source. Uh, but a lot of times you can also write your SQL directly. If you think that you can write an efficient SQL, you can do that. Otherwise you take the help of Tableau's native, uh, you know, data source uh, interface, data source uh, building interface. Uh, I will show that uh, in a bit. Uh, and then you can blend. Blending is a very uh, is an advanced concept, but uh, you, I just wanted to cover it with the join. So it just a uh, lot of times, uh, you know, what happens is joins for you know and joins for its for the for the uh, you know sake of audience. I'm going to say that a lot of times what happens is that joins lead to uh, duplication of duplication of records. That's the reason when in you know, the granularity doesn't match, uh, you know, those things can happen. So that's when blending comes in. Blending, what it does is it takes the output from, it queries one table, it queries another table, and it joins on the output. So I will, I will, I will show this concept when we have, uh, you know, when we do the dashboard. But for now, just be familiar. Blending is another way of joining, actually. And then you have different uh, chart type. You have bar line, many advanced charting techniques, and you have the cross tabs, which is like Excel style of it, actually. And then you have different aggregations. Calculations are in Tableau are very popular, and calculations are just that writing a function, uh, you know, like in any other language, it's just a function. Parameter, when we say we use that to take the user input. Filters is just like a where clause in SQL, and you have a you should, and these are the names which people often in interview they will ask you what's a calculation, what's a parameter, what's a filter, what's a set, what's a group. So calculation, just like function, you write. Okay, you want to know sum of sales. So sum of sales column, that's the, your calculation. You want to know the profit ratio, profit by sales. So sum of profit divided by sum of sales. That's what you can write in calculation. In parameter, you can take input. For example, somebody wants to look at last three months of data. So you can say, there can be a drop down. You can, users can choose last three months, last six months, uh, last 10 months, all this, all this can come. Uh, filter is just about, you know, it's like where clause, uh, you know, you can filter data. For example, you are looking at you. I, so we get a data source for coronavirus cases across the world. And how do you, how do you want to, so you want to extract the coronavirus cases, uh, only for us, what you do, you use filters, you will only filter for us geography and sets. You know, like, you know, I, I'll take you all to the, the a, a, whatever the a, we studied in the eighth grade or something, uh, you know, uh, you said suggest that, you know, uh, uh, you know, those Venn diagram pictures, you remember three circles, what's common in two circles, what's common in three circles, what's not common in two circles. So that's, that's, that, that's exactly the same concept in sets and Tableau. So sets is, a, uh, you know, it's just a, you're trying to say, you create a set for top, you know, for top 10 products. And you just want to monitor all the analysis you want to do based on those 10 products. So you create a set for those 10 products and you use that set for the entire analysis in Tableau. That's when sets comes in. Groups uh, is always fine because, uh, you know, like you have 50 states, you can always group them, group five of them, call, you can call them the East Coast. And, you know, 10 of them, you can call them in West Coast. So this is how you can use grouping. Uh, you know, these these are things which are very common in in you know whenever you talk so, to someone for Tableau position or you know uh, any project or anything which you want. And then showing look. So Tableau has provisions for uh, uh, showing different kinds of maps, especially the bottom line of all those maps is uh, knowing the longitude and latitude of the uh, coordinates. So for example, you're trying to design a map view where you're trying to show the sales across uh, different states in US, Tableau can do it. 
uh, and then you can get to the county level data, you can get to the city level data, you can use zip codes and all those things you can do in Tableau. And if there is a country for which uh, there is no uh, default uh, uh, mapping available in Tableau, you can always uh, use uh, different services called Mapbox or something. You can integrate that with Tableau. You can also integrate lots of services which USPS or UPS offers uh, to map uh, to map uh, you know different points to different geographies. Actually, uh, we will we will cover that too. It is just to give an overview, just to be you know just to be, make everyone familiar. This chart is given. I mean, uh, you everybody knows how to choose the right chart. I'm just going to reemphasize that's all. We all have some basic understanding. So when we do, you, you you may want to see something over time. You want to use the line chart. You want to choose, you want to compare something. You want to use bar chart because as a human, we, we always tend to compare the lengths uh, faster than anything else. So we can use bar chart correlation. You can see a uh, scatter plot or something. Distribution, you can see if someone is uh, familiar with uh, histograms or uh, you know different kinds of uh, uh, you know like th there can be many many various options to show the distribution. Actually, part of whole, very interesting. You you may when I say part of whole, you may be thinking about maybe stacked bar chart or maybe a pie chart just just for uh, you know the sake of the audience and geographical. I just covered in map and flow. There is no like. You know, it's like more more like story uh, telling. Like you know, this happens, and what happens? You click on next button, so that's flowchart. Uh, basic, you know, as covering it, uh, so a lot of things here. We want to make sure that we don't show. So for a good dashboard, important is to know we don't show extra information, and we don't show less information, and of course, we don't show wrong information ever. So uh, it's very, so we call that, the concept is called minimizing the non uh, data ink actually. So we want to minimize ink on the dashboard. So we, so what happens is that, it's just example, if there is a lot of information, then people will not be able to focus on your story. For example, if there is story uh, and you add many sub stories in that, you may not be able to get the audience to focus on the story you wanted them to focus on. So all these things will come in, you know, as a, you know, when we go through our dashboard and we understand. So this is an uh, important slide again. It's just, it's just a, you know, I want to call it grammar of graphics. We all understand what data is uh, and aesthetics. Like first of all, when we uh, when we look at the dashboard, we really want to want to see something which is intuitive, which is interesting, which is beautiful, because that drives us to 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 explore it more. So aesthetics are very very important. Scale is very important. You you want to show profit and uh, uh, and you know profit and sales on the same chart. You want to make sure that you you have you you have got your scales right. Uh, you, so, so somebody should not, for example, your bar for profit, which is like a ten dollars, and the sales is like hundred dollars. They cannot be the same height and side by side. It will lead to, uh, you know, uh, it will mislead users actually. And then, uh, you know, geometric geometric objects like you know, points, bars, lines. This we just covered. And statistics. There are some statistical function, for example, you know, average, mean, forecasting, uh, cluster analysis. Lots of things will come in this. And facets like you do want to create subplots for you know any uh, specific data dimension you want. We'll cover that too. And coordinate system is like, I mean, we all know this in, from our uh, school days. I think uh, where you want to. So what is the you know place? What is the right place to show certain visual? Uh, will be covered in that. So, Anuj, Anuj, sorry to stop you. We got some uh, questions. Yeah. I got one confirmation where one of the attendees was saying he was able to install and there were no issues. Mm -hmm. And uh, someone is also requesting you to post the link again to download the tableau. Okay. okay. And also we got a question where question is like, which is efficient native data source or any product specific one like tableau or Oracle? Mm, okay. So if I'm understand the question right, so if Tableau gives you a driver for that, that's always very efficient. Uh, but if Tableau does not give it give a driver uh, for that, then you can use uh, 
you know any of the web data connector any of the uh, you know for example etl output to connect uh, the best the tableau is most efficient when tableau's data file is tableau's file for example now the data file is called dot hyper so eventually i will i will get to that also eventually the fastest is the tableau's native formats native connections always always uh, because it knows how to refresh, how to pull, how to incremental, uh, incrementally refresh, how to full refresh, all those capabilities. Tableau, I mean, at least, I know at least they claim so. So uh, when I say always, I think take that with a grain of salt because uh, I have seen cases when it, it was not intended. But again, I don't blame them because there is a, a data storage is, an, is another technology because they keep making changes. It's not always possible for other products really keep pace with that. So sometimes you may see, but general rule, for interviews uh, or general rule for even when you're learning is to utilize all the native capabilities of Tableau. In fact, for a lot of interviews, which we hire and which I got hired, people do not even ask any SQL question because their idea is that those who are at the Jedi level in Tableau, we call them Jedi level. Jedi is that like you are the, the Tableau guy and um, and you, you attend conferences, you're invited and speak about the product. So uh, the idea is that uh, uh, f from a Tableau professional, uh, you know, uh, point of view, we should minimize the usage of SQL as much as we can because we, and use the native capabilities and, uh, and, and, you know, show the visuals. So I hope that covers it if I understood the question correctly. Yeah. All right. So uh, so we covered it. I hope I just I'm just, just trying to get this link to copy and uh, can i just paste it here yeah just in case i don't know who gets it but uh Mahesh, if just in case you want to take charge of that like okay all right so I, I actually i had planned it i exactly knew when i will introduce that link to you and what will i go through after that so 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 there's nothing like you nobody should think that if it's not uh you know it's taking longer but i i know exactly because i really wanted to do it this way and it's a limited trial so i didn't want people to you know use it when they were not even familiar with tableau honestly so last sheet uh we covered the graphics yes so we come back to here i really want everyone to focus here and it speaks for itself so there's still time to run away uh, before Tableau really hits you in this working session. Hopefully installation is complete. So that sign, that symbol for the, the, the person running is very important. You, I see that three people left, so I'm that's fine. That at least people are listening to me. <laughs> so, yeah. So uh, because now we will actually see uh, the interface, and you know, and we will see those things which we covered actually, and. Now, if some have left, so I had this this last slide hidden, uh, which I just wanted to cover for just serious candidates. So uh, let's do that. Okay. So there is a there is a gentleman. I think it's a German person, German guy. Oh, I don't know. You know, organization maybe. It's very common. You know, Gestalt principles. Very very common. You know, right? Initially, in some of the slides, we were talking about the right story. You know, dashboard is a good dashboard only if it tells the right story. It's just like dashboard is a movie, movie should have a good story. And how do you write a good story? And then how do you, um, the, the screenplay will come from Gestat principle. So for example, if you have, if you're using a same color to show sales and profits both, then, people will consider them same. That's the human, uh, you know, uh, tendency. Grouping. If two things are very close, they are seen together. Okay. Proximity. Also, when we are, when we are laying out our dashboard, we want to make sure that all these things are thought of. We don't want to put something together when they are actually not together. Uh, and closure. So if you're saying continuation, it should actually be continue. And stay, uh, you know, you should minimize the ambiguity that, we, you know, somebody says, 
you use a sales and then you use a word called cross sales, you should be able to really clarify what sales and what's cross sales. So people should not find any ambiguity in their decisions. Symmetry and order, order is very important. People tend to, you know, whenever you're showing sales, people really tend to see them ordered. Don't build a bar chart where things are not ordered. People really want to, the normal expectation, human expectation is that the one with the most sales sits on top. So, so we want to use those things. For example, uh, let's see, you know, generally, you know, I, I, I hate to say that, but generally in our society, even colors have gender. For example, if there's a boy, people want to, uh, you know, people expect blue and if the girl, you will expect pink. Uh, uh, I, I personally, I don't advocate this, uh, you know, gendering of uh, <laughs> color, but if that's how it's prevalent in society, when we build dashboard and you are showing, uh, you know, for example, uh, uh, average, uh, average number of scores achieved by males or females, and if you show it otherwise, for example, you show females with blue and you show you know, males with pink, it will mislead. And you know, now you think about it that when somebody looks at that dashboard, what will they infer? It will take them, first of all, many people will not infer it correctly. And even if they do read things, it will take time. And that defeats the whole purpose of a nice dashboard. So that's, that's exactly what I wanted to uh, cover in this slide. And I think since everybody is already uh, has already downloaded, so we're gonna see some of these features right on uh, Tableau Desktop. Okay. So, uh, Mahesh, we don't have any more questions on download. So we everybody everybody can see the screen. Yeah. Uh, yes, Amit. Uh, sorry. Yeah, we don't have anything right now. Yeah. Okay. All right. Wonderful. All right. Anujan, so, Anujan, sorry. <laughs> no problem. That's fine. No. So this is a Tableau desktop and uh, just a few information about Tableau desktop. So when you say go to help, you say about Tableau. So I'm using 2019.2. I'm sure you guys have downloaded right now. Those who have downloaded right now will have an advanced version of it, uh, which may have a little more features, but this is what I'm using for now. I, you know, so, and with 2019, you know, the next time when you're taking interviews, you know, uh, people will ask, okay, what are the versions you used? So you will say, oh, for example, some people kind of uh, highlight their experience, uh, you know, uh, in a different way. A lot of time people say, no, I use from 20, you know, I use Tableau's version 2015 to 2020. Well, actually, just for the information uh, to this audience, there was no, uh, so numbering system changed from 2018 onwards. So <laughs> just in case, you know, if you were in, in that spot. So uh, Tableau was following a system called Tableau 8, Tableau 6, 7, 8, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And after Tableau 10, they released Tableau 2018. And right now we are seeing 2020. Um, so, so you know, I had, I, I remember I, I had an interview when I was taking an interview and, you know, I asked that, for instance, when, what was the earliest version you used? The, the person says Tableau 2014. So I said, okay. <laughs> so just, yeah, just for the sake of information. So you can always check this. And when you have uh, your key and everything, manage product key, you can get this. And especially when the product key is being discussed. So uh, this is a trial which you guys have. have. This will work for 14 days. I think you can install another. So Tableau has many versions, 2019. You can install every version for 14 days. Uh, you know, that's my understanding, but it may be, I may be wrong, but you can try. Uh, this is one or you, uh, you know, uh, but what happens is if, in case if any of us have the .edu email ID, uh, because when I was in school, I, I used that. So Tableau gives you one year free, uh, you know, or license with which uh, of Tableau desktop, so which is which is great. If somebody has dot edu, uh, that works. Otherwise, uh, you know, uh, I think there are some partnerships also in which they provide free licenses, few limited licenses. Okay, all right. So uh, just like any project, any any product, you have file, data, server, and all those things. So what happens is that you see this option. You have uh, to a file. You can connect to a file on your uh, on your computer like you have a spreadsheet you can go and collect connect to that so these are the options you have uh, and uh, then what happens is to server now this is a very very important in you know thing to look at so 
Tableau, I, I, I mentioned earlier that Tableau gives you connections to almost all major uh, data, so, data systems, okay? So you can see you have Entweet, QuickBooks, you have SAP, Salesforce, Presto, Tipco, uh, data virtualization, you have Denodo, uh, if some people are using it, you have, you know, Hardenworks, Hadoop, Postgres, Oracle, MongoDB, uh, Anaplan, you know, uh, you know, Dropbox, lots of these things, okay? And then if those things, if the system which you are trying to connect to, if it's not in this list, you can always use this JDBC and ODBC connections. And then uh, at last, if you eventually feel that even that's not working, you, you sometimes if you're pulling data from website, you can use web data connector. There are some web data connector provided by the Tableau community. You can utilize them. For example, for your for your coronavirus data, if you want to analyze, you can get Web Data Connector working to connect to John Hopkins data. Uh, and you know, I, I will I will give some links for that too. Uh, and then uh, and if that's not working, eventually what you can do is get your data extracted from uh, whatever system you are trying to explore, and you know have it in some common location and you know have as a spreadsheet or a table or something i think those guys with etl are more familiar and then you can connect to that directly uh there are these are the two major sample data sources which come with tableau when you install they provide it one is sample superstore and one is word indicator uh, we are going to use a sample superstore just to look at a few things actually let's see uh I'm going to just click on, so those who are on the screen can just click on Sample Superstore and let's see what happens. All right, this is just 48 minutes, I thought. The training is done. <laughs> so, uh, well, anyways, so this is your sample. So what we did, we launched Tableau Desktop and we uh, we looked at, uh, uh, we found the sample superstore data and then we just clicked on that. So if I just do edit data source, I think I did too fast. I'm gonna do it slow for everyone. So if you just click or right click and say edit data source. I just wanna say that there's no questions. Uh, is my speed okay, Mahesh? Am I going too fast? Or too slow? Okay, so I don't see any feedback from me, so I'm gonna... No, 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 I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Amish. I was like, I didn't got any questions or anything. That I... So uh, speed is okay. You you wanna just ask people that if the speed is okay or are they every is everybody here? Is everybody with me? Yeah, so I just got a response. Uh, mm -hmm. They said that speed is good from one attendee and one attendee says please slow down if you can. Okay, all right. And one more question: uh, Where did you get edit, where did you get edit data source? Okay, all right, yeah. So I will just go back. So I think uh, those who have, because I, this is a training I really want everyone to you know learn, and I'm I'm going to work with the pace anyways. So if you if you launch your Tableau desktop, you have seen three sections: to a file, to a server, save data source. You went to sample superstore, which is the sample data source we're we're going to use, and you clicked on this. As soon as you clicked on this, it took you to a sheet. Okay, and then. Uh, you know, then on the top, if you see there are two panes, two different sections, data and analytics, okay? So you have data section. And when you click on this data, right click and say edit data source. That's, what, that's how you come here. Okay, all right, interesting. Hope that settles it. Uh, all right, so this is a, this is a so now you can see this is actually a seek Microsoft Excel data and it has uh, tabs or tables for orders for, for like this is this is a fictitious company 
uh, let's call it company X, and which has, so this is a data source which has its own, like how people are ordering its product, who are ordering, so like customer information, who is returning it, uh, you know, so different kinds of information is, uh, is part of this, you know, uh, thing. And now what you're looking for, for now, what we're looking at orders table. So orders table is here. You can always uh, join, like I was explaining, you know, earlier, I was explaining that how you can join things. For example, you have orders table and in the orders table, if you just, if, so there are so many columns you can see, it just by default, it helps you see so many columns in it. You have order ID, order date, ship date, ship mode, customer name, uh, I think segment, country, and all those things. So this is, this is the data. And if you just click on this, you can actually see in a different way that these are the fields, you, these are the columns you have in that uh, tab. Uh, and then what happens is that if suppose you want to join it with people, okay, you just drag it. You just bring it here, okay? So Tableau uh, using its AI, it will find out uh, what is the right way to join. So now when you click on that, that two circles, uh, the join mark, you can choose how you want to match. So for example, I will go to order ID and we'll see, uh, we'll match it to, one second. So I will just do returns. I'm just, no, yeah, it just, I'm just showing, I'm not doing anything. We just trying to learn. So for example, when I brought into orders to returns and it just showed me, I could link it with order ID uh, I think, uh, and similarly, if you had, for example, people, uh, as we had earlier, you can link it with, I don't know, if, if there's a customer ID, uh, so you can use customer ID join, or maybe customer name, I think. Yeah. So it depends, you know, it all depends, but it's just a sample, uh, you know, sa sample data we're using. I think it was mapping it to region to region, that's fine. Uh, so. This is just a sample data set. Uh, it will have you know, a lot of, lot of things for us to do, explore, understand. So I just wanted the idea of this screen is to show you the options with you. So you can establish joins, you can join columns to columns, and then you can write your own join clause. You can write a calculation. You see, you can write a calculation, you can join to, you can, so you can write a custom column, which you can join to, uh, and then, this is a live data source. You can always do extracts. Live data source, as you guys understand, when the dashboard gets published, the date dashboard is live. So as soon as your backend changes, front the dashboard, change, the backend data changes, it changes. But a lot of people you, but the industry standard is to use extracts because, for example, if you're looking at an executive like like you want to decide that you know how's our profit for this year, you don't want really this to refresh like every minute or every second. You want like per day refresh or per week refresh, those kind of information, right? So extract uh, is, uh, you know, Tableau's standard uh, thing, which everybody uses, okay? Now we get into sheet. Uh, when you get when you get into sheet, I think I just go slow a little bit, okay. You can cancel that. If you get some pop-up, you can come back to the sheet here. So that was your data source window. We, what we were exploring was data source window. And now just for the sake of next steps, I will take this off. I'm gonna only explore the orders table for now. Okay, this is orders table. Okay. Now we come back to so sheet here. Okay, all right. And uh, all right, let me just open up the marker. Okay. Okay, so this is a, this is called, data pane, okay? Just for, okay. This is called data pane, uh, because this is where you see all your data. You see Tableau has identified which of those are dimensions, which of those are measures, okay? So just for, you know, for level setting, I'm gonna say that Dimensions are the fields or the columns in Excel sheet, which are categorical. Like for example, segment. 
uh, for example, region, for example, date. So, and measures are all the, you know, quantitative data like sales, discount, profits. So I'm sure, you know, uh, some people will be thinking then why is he even telling that? But, you know, we're just telling this because I'm really not familiar with everyone's background because some people may be very new to this. So I just wanted to cover it. So measures are, for example, you're looking at sales by uh, sales by month. So month is a month is a dimension, and sales is a measure. Okay. So sales are, and and the and the easiest one, easiest thing to remember is uh, numbers are measures, and non-numbers are uh, dimensions generally. But you know, I can I can be quoted out of context on that. So that's fine. Uh, all right. So you have so you have lots of things. You have customer names, customer segments. So who are the customers buying uh, orderings, for example, uh, and, and what are the seg customer segments? We will explore that. So anytime, a very useful feature is anytime you are interested to know about the column, you click in the functional menu towards the end of the column, if you see, and you can always say describe. So describe will give you information about the column without even building anything, without even doing anything, without even letting Tableau to visualize anything, okay? Uh, so this is one way and measures and you have sets and towards the end you have all the parameters and anything which you see with this equal sign, that is a calculation. So you remember from the slide, we were talking about data, when we're talking about data, so what is calculation? Calculation is how, this is how they write calculation. So you see sum of profit by sum of sales. This is a calculation. So what you do is go and edit. So since if the column is coming from the sheet, you can't really edit it, right? So you don't have that option, okay? But if it's a calculation which you did, you will be able to do it. So in this sample set, there are some to so these calculations, these parameters already built for our to for us to explore and understand. We can always add more, but this is all we can see and learn actually. And then you have parameters. Uh, you know, I'm going to show like for example, let's look at the parameter. If you say you you you, you want to click on that and you you want to say show parameter control. Okay. So let's see. Okay. So this is how it will come up. Anything you can move. Uh, this, you see top customer. See you. I think this is just a user input. If someone wants to see top five customer, top ten customers, how they give you how they give input, how they interact with. A dashboard so parameters are used for uh in, in in common sense they're just used for what if scenarios what if number of customers are 20 so how do you get that 20 do you get it through through parameter in tableau uh all right so when you and this is the the so this is data pane this is uh marks we call this mark shelf okay and this is filter shelf, this is pages, this is columns and rows as it's given. So this is important is to understand this mark shelf. And if you see there are different, different kinds of options for you to mark. So mark is a point on, on a chart, okay? And this is how you can represent a combination of points, uh, lots of points, okay? Uh, and then, uh, you have uh, data options, so you can always add a new data source from here. You can always click on this. Tableau will take you to its own interface, which is created earlier, and you can connect another. So this is how you can get another data source here, and then you can join and you can link and whatever you want to do. So I'm just going to clear that uh, uh, it is all drawings. Yes. Okay. So I'm gonna. This is four o'clock. Uh, uh, we're gonna take a little, uh, you know, two minutes pause here, just to see everyone is comfortable. Everyone is here with me. Everybody's following. Uh, I don't know if we can send a poll to people. Uh, if Mahesh can send, if everybody's okay. I just wanna, you know, everyone gets the act together. Uh, I'm gonna take it. Uh, two minutes. I'm just gonna wait if somebody has behind can come and if somebody has any question uh, feel free to chat i was expecting more questions so i know why either training is going well or it's not going well at all so that's not encouraging but 
but yeah, uh, Mahesh, uh, do we have any questions? Do you want to check? Do you want to you know check from your side if everybody is with me on this? Yes, Anuja. I got one question so far, mm -hmm. like how to edit the calculated fields. Okay, so you go to so I I hope you're able to find the calculated field first of all. So the only thing with the with the equal sign before the hash and you know that's calculated. So you just go click and edit all the time in Tableau. You want to explore anything? It's always the menu. You click on this. It's a left click actually, and you go and edit. And you see this little icon. If you open this, it's the assistance for you. Magical, and very, very important. It's like the, uh, you know, the biggest thing in Tableau. It helps you. You, it gives you all the functions available in Tableau, which you can utilize. All the numbers, string, date. We're gonna cover that. But for now, you edit it like this. So what it is doing is, it's bringing sum of profit divided by sum of sales. That's called profit ratio. Any more questions? Yes, Anuj. Uh, got a few more questions where mm -hmm. uh, one was asking, I was not able to see edit option. You were not able to see edit option. Okay. Uh, how can I, so can we talk to the attendee? Just, uh, just uh, not in this moment. I mean, not, yeah, yeah okay. not now. Okay, not now, okay. So, uh, I mean, I will, you know, go back again. Uh, so if you did come to this page correctly, then uh, you just click here. Are you seeing these options? You see the fourth option is edit. Uh, Mahesh, can you check if everybody else is able to find edit option? I mean, if you if you can ask them a question, they can respond so that I can I can address it to you. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And we got few more questions. I can say one mm -hmm. by one. Like yes. one was asking, sorry, I just joined late. Did you convert the Tableau architecture at high level? Did you cover yeah. the tab? Okay. So, yes. How did you get into the current screen? Was one. How, of the did I, how did I get into the current screen? Yes. Uh, so if you install. Okay. That's good. And do, what what more questions we have? I'll just cover everything okay, together. Okay. Can you please go on analytics tab? And uh, one was saying uh, interested in looking at Tableau architecture. Mm -hmm. I'm not having the edit option. Is it because of version? Question mark. Mm -hmm. And I can find the edit option was one of the other response. Okay, that's fine. So I think it's a. Uh... Okay, so I'm gonna uh, you know take little uh, take a little small break uh, and uh, start I'm going back a little bit and I'm just going to cover all those things right now yeah. all right so uh, if you uh, for for the architecture actually so we covered it in the slide like how you get the, so you have a, you have a data and you have so I covered it very you know briefly uh, so you get the data you build the dashboard and you publish on tableau server so now uh, in terms of architecture that's not really uh, you know in scope for this training because it's for so the so tableau is you know tableau is seen by used and seen in two different ways one is people call it the tech tool actually it's and then another group calls it the business tool so important is to understand in this chart is how do you get the insights, not about how you install and how your processes interact. That's not, we are not covering that in this training specific. This is more on Tableau development uh, than anything else actually. So we are, we are actually, which is why we're using a simple data and we just gonna, I really want it to be more hands-on. I really want people to be using it, doing it actually. So that's where, so, so that's first question. Second one is that, uh, I launched the Tableau desktop. If you've already installed, I went to sample superstore. If you see save data sources, these are the sample data sources. I clicked on this and I came here. And then on the profit ratio, if you want to open the calculation, you can just click on profit ratio and say edit. 
In case if someone is find, not finding that, you may want to close your uh, Tableau desktop and relaunch it. Maybe you will get it. Okay. All right. Uh, um, Mahesh, I believe uh, I gave all the answers. Sorry? I covered all the questions, right? Yes, yes. That were the, I mean, I mean, we got a few more responses from that attendees where they were saying I can find the edit option and they were able to edit. That's it. Perfect, perfect. And there was a th third question, which was, uh, which was from a topic which we didn't cover yet, but you know, just for the sake of answering, you know, analytics tab. That's what you yes. mean. Yeah, yes. Okay. So analytics pain, you seeing it, uh, it's all grayed out. So uh, you have lots of things here. Uh, uh, so we will see. We'll cover it in one of the you know when we when we actually start doing something, then it will all pop up. Right now it's grayed out because we have we don't have anything here. But just for the information, you can do. Uh, average median calculations. You can do uh, box plotting here. You can do cluster analysis if those from the data science, you know, whatever backgrounds and trend lines, see trends, forecasting. All these are advanced concepts. And that's when, that's why they have, they have been given and, and more statistical in nature. That's why they have been given dedicated area. And, and this is a very common question, like well, which are the two pains we have? We have data pain and analytics pain. Data pane is where you visualize. Analytics is where you add we add that uh, statistical component to the dashboard. Okay, all right, all right. So now, uh, so we covered the data source. We covered the joins and all those things. Now you see the sheet. So you you're seeing three little icons here. One is a sheet. You see kind of a, a few small bar built on an icon. That's new worksheet. And if you see this second one. This is a dashboard, new dashboard, and this is a new story. So there are three things you can do with this product. You can build a sheet, just a chart, or you can combine many charts together and build a dashboard, or you can combine many dashboards together and build a story. So that's how it works. But uh, you know, in, in industry, uh, from my experience, uh, people don't really use because story becomes too far fetched. There, you will hardly find any good use cases for that. Uh, that's though that is called a story, but it's it's just different. Just a technical name is story, but actually dashboard is the one which tells the story. Okay. So uh, and and you know what? That's a very debatable subject. That's like people can debate with me you know, like hours. So uh, so we're not getting into that. <laughs> well, anyways, so. So now what we can, so what you're doing is sheet one. By default, it opens the sheet one. So if sheet one is this, uh, you have all these columns for you. And now I'm just, so I just, I'm just gonna do what? I'm gonna do, I wanna see that, uh, you know, what are my top products? So I'm gonna look at products. I can, you can search. I think, I hope everybody saw, you can always search if you have intuition about the name. So I'm gonna do product name. I'm going to just leave it to row. Okay. So you see all those product names came up. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to see their sales. I search for sales. Uh, if I did it very fast, I just dragged it. So you can drag the two things. You, I mean, I want everyone to drag product name and sales to rows. Okay. We got one question, uh, Anuj. They were asking, like, can we rename sheet one to other? Yes, absolutely. Right okay. click and rename. Okay, that's a spelling mistake. Okay. Uh, how many hands in training? Okay, two hands. <laughs> so when you drag it, now you t you must be thinking that. What the hell is this? So what happens as soon as you rename the training that became rename the sheet that became the title of the chart. Hope everybody can see, everyone can see. And if you double click on that, you can actually align its center. Okay. Now for every product, it's just trying to build your bar because you it's just automatic. Its setting is automatic on Mark. So what I want everyone to try is that. Click on show me on the right, on the top right. Show me. I, I hope I'm following a good pace here. Uh, show me. 
in show me what happens is as soon as you select it or you drag to different uh, fields dimensions measures or wherever calculated fields or parameter or anything tableau recommends you what are the things it can do what are the things it can plot so you see it's just telling me that why don't you plot this and when you hover on this recommended see tableau is telling recommended that for product name and sales you should use this chart okay and when you say when you hover on this you see recommended and you and hover towards the bottom if you see here this section is selling for horizontal bars try so you need to make a horizontal so this is a very very common question especially uh you know someone who has worked in you know for years like for example i'm using tableau for like about seven years now so uh this is a very common question because people ask you so in this scenario you have these 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 columns what is the best plot for that and then second question could be if this is the plot you want to make what do you need for that how many dimensions how many measures uh you need more one or more two or more uh, how many so these are the things which people ask okay so for horizontal bars try zero more dimension and this and you know what just click on this recommended see we did it we we actually we so i i just went as a beginner you know i just went as a beginner i just dragged to because i was interested in knowing that which are our top selling products so i just so when you say top selling products what do you need you need products you need sales so i just dragged them out and as soon as i dragged them out what happened i didn't like the view so what i went i went to show me so you as a tableau developer will be using a lot of a lot of show me actually so when you went to show me and this is it and you know what earlier i told you if it's not need if it's not telling a story it's use useless what you can find from this nothing because it's just showing you say okay so what is the what is the meaning here you know what small thing just click on this sort button can you see in the bottom and again when i'm showing something is here and you may find the same feature somewhere else on the screen that is fine because one thing can be done in many 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 ways it does not mean that i was trying to hide the another place for that <laughs> so you can click on this sales that's it now it's coming close to what we wanted to do so you can see uh now but the thing is that product names are very very big okay so what i'm gonna do i'm gonna just so you every time you just hover like in excel you do and how does it look now it fits well the problem is that you know, someone just asked me that we are not, so we don't want to see like so many of uh, products. I just, I'm interested in seeing only the, let me just do it in a way of doing it. So I will go to product name. I will put in filter because I really want to filter only the top 10 products. I will go to filters. And I'm going to, so there are many options for me, but I'm going to go to top. And in top, I'm going to go to field and I'm going to say top 10 by sales. I'm going to say apply. And OK. Anuj, Anish, two more, uh, we got two more questions where mm -hmm. uh, how did you get SUM sales in rows? Okay, when, <laughs> yeah, exactly. So when I did show me, I used this recommended, then Tableau changed it for me. So I only got, so I only got, so you can literally drag, uh, one second, let me just go back. I think I it for you. Uh, I'm just gonna, so again, this was not a smart way of cleaning. So you go to worksheet and say clear sheet, clear sheet. Okay, worksheet, because we are on worksheet. So we will use all these things. In a dashboard, we'll use all these things. So. For worksheet, dashboard, story, you have three different menu options. So I just only, so idea was to know the top selling products. I just chose product. I just show, I, and you know, I just drag products here. Just say, okay, that's all. And then I, what I did is I wanted to see the same product by sales. I just drag them here. Uh, and I don't have to drag it anywhere because now, right now, I just, the initially what you do in data analysis is you just get everything. So I just got them, that's all. Now I thought this is not a look I want. So I just clicked on the, I went to show me 
And I looked at Tableau suggestion. It's saying that use this. So I just clicked on this. And then what I did is I sorted it. And then the next thing was to see only the products by you know, top 10 selling products. So I clicked on, so what I did, again, I went too fast. I searched product name again, because now when I, so logically just think that when I'm saying top 10 products, what we want to do, we want to do filters. So for example, wear clause, like where the sales is higher than whatever, uh, you, know, um, you know. So we want to filter on the top 10 products now. So what I did is I have to really get the, so you remember the filter, filter is to exclude data from the visualization. Filter, as the name says, filter is to exclude data which is not needed for the visualization. This is a visualization. We don't need products which are uh, not in top 10. So I'm going to get product name here. I'm going to say top and top 10 by some. I'm going to say apply and apply. And I just did some adjustments uh, just to get it. You know what, now what happens is some people can question, I'm just giving you a typical, so, and you know what, when you do this, just you can minimize the data pane like this and you can open it back again. Just there's a small button, you can just minimize. So you can, you all can see on the screen. So what happens is now we have the, uh, we have the, you know, thing and you can see that some tool tips are added and everything. What you can also do is you can drag, you can also show labels, okay? A lot of things people can do. Now, problem is that now I'm showing labels. Now somebody may ask you, then why do you have access? Okay, I will hide access. Because then, so here's the thing, when you have, so you have access when you don't have labels. Why do you want to show the same number two times, okay? You know, but see what is easier, you to have access or not? Because we can, again, in visualization, the, I find it very hard because I have done some uh, bigger trainings like the full on like 45 hours training or something. I find it very hard, you know, because what happens is that uh, uh, things can be presented in hundred different ways. There is no right or wrong solution. It's all about finding the best solution. There are one, one view can be developed. One information can be presented in many ways. It's just like the food we get. Your food can come in a bowl. It can come in a burrito, or it can just come on your face. So, so, so yeah, same, same with visualization. It can come in any form, but you, we have to find the form which uses light, and which is the best to show, which will show it more easily. So I can hide this header. I can enable the header. So whenever you want to hold, show it, so when you click on these fields, you will always have options. Anything, anytime you have a doubt, always click on that and open up the option. So now I, you know, uh, these things will uh, are available, okay? So I just hit the header for sales. So I can just bring it back. Okay. All right, interesting. So now I'm, you know, what product name? I'm just looking at the product name. So product name, let me just click on this. Okay, you see, uh, I'm going to take the product out. So as soon as I took the product out, audit's telling me. So now, you know, one second. Just let me just uh, open the labels. Okay. And, okay. All right. So I'm just going to make it. Don't worry about it. What I'm just, you know, that's a, just a common sense question which I'm just going to ask everyone. So, when I'm not showing any product, looking at my screen, is this the total sales of organization? Is this the total amount of sales this fictitious organization had so far? Is this the number? Who want to say yes? And if not, what's wrong here? I want, because one user has asked me, I want to know the total sales of the organization. Is this the number? I don't know how many, how we get the answers. Let's see, who thinks that this is the total sales of organization? Or who can write on the chat, what are the total sales of organization? Total sales.
at least we should get some answers now. I'm just asking everyone, what are the total sales of organization? Total of top 10 sales. No, I'm asking total sales of the organization. How much this company has sold so far based on your data? It's not top 10, it's not top 20. I just want to total sales. What are the total sales? So when, just to, just to get some idea, when I'm saying total sales from whatever data we have, which means we are not filtering anything out, right? That's, that's, that's what we have to think. So we are not filtering anything out. So what is the total number? Someone is saying 244620. Uh, that's not true because, uh, okay. Because I had this filter on for top 10, you remember? And this is the concept which I want to tell that top 10, what it did is that it only kept the top 10 selling products in it because you had this filter on top 10 by sales. So now when it's showing you the sales number, then it's showing you the, the total sales for these top 10 products because you had a wear clause where you only included the top 10. But once I, in order, if someone asks me that what is the total sold irrespective of which top 10 or not, I will just take it off. And this is the number. All right. I hope uh, everybody got it. But anyway, I, I covered it also in case someone did not understand it. Uh, do people want to, you know, ask something now, or was it were, were they were they clear on this actually? I mean, uh, there were there were two more questions, Anuj. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Can like there's like can i mean how can we push this data graphs into a web page okay that so right now we are actually developing it uh the pushing will come uh, after we develop the dashboard uh but uh, just to answer what happens is that there is a so you see server you sign into the server so you, you're so this is a tableau desktop you will organization will have a tableau server so you sign into server wp server location Okay, you enter it here and you can just publish your workbook. You can publish your data. You can publish the workbook. Whatever work you do, publish the dashboard. You can do all those things. And if you don't have a server, you're doing it for, you. Do, so you will see lots of dashboards on public.tableau.com actually. Lots of people do, like millions of people build dashboards just for, you know, just for fun actually. So if you do something with sample data, with your own personal fun, you can always publish to Tableau Public. And you will just say save to Tableau Public. So when you save to Tableau Public, it will ask your accounts. You have to actually create an account in Tableau Public, and then you can publish it. Okay. So just for you know covering a little more. So this is uh, your public.tableau.com. This is where people publish. So you can sign in, like I sign in. And these are things which I have. Okay. Let me just see. These are my favorites. Uh, these are things people can do. This is how people do, okay? So this is Andy's dashboard. So this is how you publish. So you build a dashboard, you publish it. You can, so if it's it, it's a, it's not a, a you know, kind of, you know, a company's uh, proprietary product uh, dashboard, then you can just publish to uh, public, public Tableau, which is for everyone to use, okay? When you say public, that means it's for everyone to use, actually. Okay. All right. Uh, but in this industry, uh, when it comes to there are two things. One is the fun part in Tableau. A lot of people do fun analysis. Okay, one is that uh, professional where we, you know, we, uh, we 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 try to get hired as a Tableau professional. So in a in, a, in that uh, organizational setup, it's always there's a Tableau desktop, there's a Tableau server. What you do is you publish to Tableau server. Okay, all right. Anuj, let me, uh, I mean, like tell you all the questions so that you can answer them right after each other. So. Can Tableau be compared with Microsoft Power BI? And yes. uh, yeah, okay. The next question is, someone was also asking, uh, 
please explain again how to get the total sales also how to get the sales number in the bar chart okay and can we publish i mean uh, regarding the previous question can we publish to our private servers uh well i don't know what you mean by private servers first of all uh, uh because uh, if you have so if you bought tableau server like which is about i think 100 dollars per month per user if you have that you can definitely do that you can install so like you download a tableau desktop you can download tableau server and install in your server or laptop wherever and you can publish it for sure yeah but in you know if for organization there will always be a tableau desktop tableau server where you can publish it and if it's a fun project you don't want to install tableau server you can always publish to tableau public okay so that's one and second is that the question was uh, sales so all i wanted is you wanted to know the sales for overall sales so just search, you search for sales and just drag it here that's all so it will show you sales and what happens is that so let me just see that's all this is all you do okay so what happens is you wanted to see so what so let, so i think i think some people may have faced it so when you dragged it what happens it just showed you in a, I, I was telling you right it just showing you in excess so expectation is that if you hover you will know it uh this is how tableau just did it on its own but in case you want to see the near number you can do so you always so when you're trying to move something so it's all it's on the chart but if you want to show in a text, you can always move something here and show it in text. So now this access to me becomes redundant. So I can hide the access. How do you hide? Right click and hide. Show instead of show header, you can just say. Yeah. And there are many ways actually. So you bought sales and now you're looking at this. You go to show me, just say bar. It's just Tableau just made a bar for you, and it just can tell you the total sales on tooltip. So, uh, so there are multiple ways, and then you you can choose uh, you know from here also. See, there are so many. That's the thing. There's so many ways of doing one thing. There is no one better or best way, but ultimately the idea is that how you do it. Journey is not very important when it comes to Tableau. The output is very important. Whether the visual is useful. So I'm just gonna stick to our. Uh, product name and uh, you know uh, just for everyone at least and my expectation is that everyone is able to build this simple uh, bar chart actually that I am assuming it because that's when I can move forward okay now what happens is that I really wanted to so this is one tableau I'm just going to call it product by sales Okay, you can also call it product by sales. The next sheet I'm clicking, okay? I just want to see sales. That's fine, I know you asked me what are the total sales, but but who looks at the total sales? I mean, if, if I give you data, will somebody ask, okay, what, how much money? Did, so when you ask for, go for an interview, nobody asks you how much money may, you made in last 10 years. Okay, or you don't ask somebody that, okay, you know, I'm, I'm getting hired, but you know, this is what, for the next 10 years, I'm gonna need like a million dollars. That's not, that's not intuitive. That's not specific. That's not really answering anything. That's like gibberish. So what we're gonna do is, uh, we're gonna uh, pull uh, anything, all the analysis, analysis is always beautiful in, in reference, in a frame of reference of something. For example, you analyzing sales, then it should be in reference to products. It should be category. It should be region. It should be time. There should be something. There should be some dimension to the to the number. So now what I'm going to do? Okay, I'm going to make is rename. I'm going to say sales over time. The next sheet is sales over time. Okay. So what do you need? Uh, I'm just going to start. I mean, you can do it with me, or you can do it, see it and do it again. So I'm gonna, again, what I'm interested in, sales over time. You see, sales over time. So I'm interested in sales, so I'm gonna bring sales. You can drop in anywhere, column and whatever, wherever you want, because this will, you will get used to with doing it. Then you, first step is to drop, next step is to clean, third step is to refine and then publish. Okay, all right. Then I'm gonna say date. Let's see by order date, okay? So I'm gonna drag order date to columns. What happened?
and you can say labels. So what what happened actually? Now what happened? So you had the total sales. Now the total sales is divided by years now. So you are actually seeing an yearly trend of sales. So you can say that you know what information it's giving you. It's very basic chart. It's like very very elementary chart actually. Now uh, and you know we don't even do this for our customers anymore. We I mean our charts and visualizations is far more advanced. But this is how we learn. But the concept is same. Now, because I know my audience in this training, so I'm trying to build something which serves this audience for now. So the, when someone looks at this chart, what do you think? You think that in 2015, we had some sales. What happens is that in 2016, the sales came down. And from 2016, it has been skyrocketing. So you see, this is trend is helpful now. Uh, what so the next question could be what happened in, in 2016 so maybe we can so that could be a story because now somebody wants to know the trend and then you have to be able to tell that what happened in 2016 so there can be new data which can be pulled and maybe 2016 we can get unemployment data maybe unemployment was very high we can look at uh, any any kind of uh, uh pandemic they have hit the country or something 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 was the reason and you can always get those public data and get it here but anyways for now uh you so what you're seeing is uh sales data so in this i hope everybody's understanding why we don't have data after 2018 because this is a sample data set they haven't they haven't uh got the 20, 2019 data or whatever but this is for our to understand so what happens is that I can always hide the header, okay? And if you click on the plus sign, what happens now? See how things are changing, okay? Uh, you could, so what earlier you had a trend for yearly trend. Now what you have is quarterly trend in those years. So for example, you had a, you had a thing like, you know, this thing was, uh, you know, this thing was a problem. Like it went down. No, 2016 was down. So I'm clicking it again. I'm thinking uh, in 2016, overall it was down. There was no, it was not like a, a specific quarter which was down. Its overall number was down. So it's it's fine. But it has been then steadily it's going up uh, because because 2016 almost started with a with a, with a lower base. So. So the quarterly growth was okay, but actually it started the lower base. So these are things which you do. Now what happens is you click further. What's happening here? Okay. And I would just do for a clarity, I will just remove the year and quarter thing. Now what, what do we have? What can you tell us well, from this chart? Let's see. Uh, what I can tell in this chart is that so this is the month. So and you can see for month there is no year which I'm specifying here, which means I can be confident that November month has been amazing for our sales because this is just a monthly data. It, it has all the January to December data for all the years. So I can say that somehow overall, as long as we were in business or as long as this data belongs, whatever period this data covers, it seems that February has been the least sales month for us overall cumulatively there may be some year where it may not be the case but for now we're looking at cumulative february data so we can say we can only say certainly that cumulatively february has been the lowest sales month for us and which has been the highest is november okay and you can see these months were pretty much on the same levels now, if somebody was interested in analytics pain, uh, you can say, you know, I think someone asked analytics pain. So now you see these options came up and now I just try, I, what I do is just try, sorry. I, I just drew and I dropped an average line. So you see the average sales, average sales. So this is actually what? Is actually the average for all these numbers. So what it is, what it is showing us this average sales per month is about 200, 323. 
uh, and you know don't worry about the format so much we can we have uh, we are not you know so let me just okay yeah you can always format it uh you can make it bigger and dotted and uh, you know, important is to see. We, we're going to cover these things. We're going to do an exercise on this, actually. The important is to see now. First, get the concept here. So you see the average line has come. And I'm going to say format. Maybe I'm going to use a little bigger font here. Uh, eight. And, and maybe a number you can do. Lots of things here. Okay, you can go to edit. You can choose uh, average or you want to see maximum line. You can choose the maximum line. It can show you maximum line. So what you do is you click on the line and say edit. And how did we get the line? We went to from data pane to analytics pane. We just pulled the average line. And what did you do? You dropped it to table because we need average for the entire view, not for a point, which is why I dropped in table, okay? Can you show how to get the average line again? Yeah. Yes. So let's take it off. And I got a couple more. If you're done with this, I'll let you know. Yeah. I, I mean, that was my strategy. I will cover those things which will lead to questions towards the end so that by the time everyone asks questions, I will be out of the game. <laughs> Just kidding. All right. So uh, average line. So what happened is we drew this chart. We went to average line feature. I'm just showing a very basic analytics uh, feature and go to average and drop down, drop it to tables. That's all. You can format, you can I, I'm gonna change the color for this line. So everyone knows it's an average line. And I, I think I covered initially, you can, so anything. So there are only two ways. One is you can always click on the menu or you can just double click on something and you just make it center. Okay, that's all. So, you know, I'm just trying to build smaller camp. But actually our exercise, you know, when we do, it will be to build uh, this company's executive summary. I will give you use cases and we will do, we'll all do this dashboard and we'll publish it. And it will be ending with every one of us publishing it on our own public page. So that's the end goal actually. So this is like, we are just learning now for now, okay? So this is done. Now, uh, let's look at, so we're looking at sales, that's fine. But sales is not everything, okay? I want to compare, say, you know, if there are certain things, if you are not able to follow or you're missing on this or I'm doing going too fast, it's fine. It's fine. For now, if you lose something, just follow up because they're all independent. Every chart will be independent. So you, there's no link that you miss something than you. It's different than many other products, actually. So sales versus profit. You know, this is very important because what is the point of we keep making sales? Because some, some may argue that, and we don't make profits. So we really want to make sure that if sales increasing, our profit should increase as well. So what should we do? What are we interested into? We are interested into relationship between sales and profits. So I'm gonna say sales and, okay. All right, I think just for audience sake, let's take a step back. Who can give me what is the number for total profit? so far in the organization. Can you guys just post your numbers on the chat actually? What is the total profit of organization so far? It, forget about no years, no months, no filtering. Total profit so far. How did, did, did we find total sales earlier? Now I'm just asking for total profit. How will you get it? So now you verify if those numbers are okay, uh, match with mine. 
Is this what you're getting as total profit? I just dragged the profit field, profit field to text. That's all. That's all I did. Because I didn't want to make any chart. I just wanted to get the raw number. So I just, you know, just a text I just used. So I hope everyone was able to get it. Uh, okay. So sum of profit. I now the thing is that I will just clear the sheet again. Idea is to see the relationship between sales and profit. Okay. So when we are doing they were mm -hmm. saying 286397 total profit. Pull the profit. Absolutely. Absolutely. Fantastic. Oh, whoever wrote that made my day. At least it's useful for someone. Okay. All right. So we gonna see now. So the now we that's fantastic. And I hope most of us, if not all, are getting that. Though it was, you know, and if not, then we will see another uh, such you know analysis actually. So sales. We are trying to analyze sales versus profit, and uh, and yearly sales. I'm I'm gonna say let's see yearly. Okay. I'm going to add a little more complexity to it. So yearly sales versus profit. So how our industry, so the, the thing is the definition, the problem statement we have is that how our yearly sales are moving and then how, what are the, and how is the movement in the profits? For example, now see, uh, so I mean, I will bring what? I'm not forgetting about any chart or anything, just bring profit here. And then next thing you bring is sales. So what it is telling is overall, if someone asks you, you can at least tell what are the total profit so far and what are the total sales so far. You have those numbers on tooltip anyways, right? But it's not, so what we're looking at is trend. We're looking at yearly sales. So when you say year, what you need to bring it? You need to bring a date. So I'll just bring a date. I don't, don't even think that I know where I have to drop. I don't know where I have to drop. I have to drop here, I have to drop here, I have to drop, no, I don't know. I'm just doing it. I'm gonna use, uh you know some you know basic recommendation from tableau okay then i'm going to use show me okay and in show me it i don't know why this is just uh, behaving strange but it's showing me that you can plot a scatter plot but so you no know, it's telling so it is trying to understand uh that what maybe i i'm trying to do so sometimes you will accept it sometimes you will change it so let's use what it is trying to tell me so it is telling me that use this scatter plot okay I use the scatter plot. What happened here? So it is just telling me aggregated data. It's giving me this is the point where you have. So you had, you had, if you look at the point, you had for 2015, you had 480, 400,000 in sales and 49,000 in, in profit. Um, yeah, this is not exactly intuitive because it's not showing a trend wise, so which is why I don't like it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it to line chart. What happens now? Can you see this is a profit line and this is a this is a sales line? I'll just change the spot. Let's keep sales on top. So if you're seeing it, I really want to use this. Uh, you know, so I mean, there, it's not the final view. I mean, I'm just I'm just trying to you know make sure that everybody understands it. I don't want, I don't want to get too complex now. So you're saying, well, all you're saying is that so, uh, from this, this is a sales trend and I'm going to turn the labels on. So you can go, so you see when you added two measures, it created two, two, three, one for sum of sales, I'm going to turn on the measure uh, labels and for labels, I'm going to turn on the labels. Okay. Can you see now? Yeah. So all it is telling is that this was the trend. Okay. So you can see almost very closely uh, sales follow, uh, profit follows the sales. So more the profit, more the sales actually. But it's not really interesting. So what, and first of all, you know, remember going to Gestalt principle earlier in the slide, the concept is that when I'm showing blue lines, then everybody will think they're representing the same thing, but actually it's profit, it's sales. What I'm gonna do for, for profit chart, I'm gonna choose a little different color. I'm gonna choose, Say uh, that's fine. And say yes, that's fine. But don't you think it will make sense if I can see them together? So what I will do, I will go to, but it's a, it's a slightly high level concept, but I just wanted to touch. So I will call it, I will go to profit. I will call it dual axis. 
what happened there. What it did, it, it just squeezed those charts together. Okay. All right. So now let's let's hide labels just for you know so that okay. So now what happens is you see this is a sales chart, zero two seven, and this is the axis for profit because zero to ninety. But the thing is that if this is the point, then ninety thousand and seven hundred seven hundred thousand of sales like blue line and ninety thousand of uh, profit line is at the same point. That's not true. So what we do is go to access and we say synchronize. So we went here, I went here. So earlier, first step I did was dual access, then second is synchronized. Now it's synchronized. So now in the single chart, you can see now you don't, I can hide these actually. So now I can hide this. I can hide, that's fine. I don't need to hide this, that's fine. So you can see this is a profit line blue one see this is the profit line this is sales line and now you can establish a relationship okay uh another thing i just broke it down to quarter what is the quarterly matching quarterly movement same thing you can you can you can make it even more granular this is now matching uh month you see this is a this is a, uh, and then you can also change from here. You can also change from here. Yep. And you can always go back. See? Does it make sure side by side bar? That's what someone asking. Uh, side by side bar. Uh, I mean, you know, just try it. See? Is that what you asked? So uh, that, that was the question. Yeah. So what happens is, again, as I said, I will go back again. What happens? There are multiple ways of making a movie, or when someone scriptwriter writes a movie, there are multiple ways to make it. You can have a different cast. You can have a different scene. You can have a, you can have cars crashing, or you may not like cars crashing. So there is always that comes to creativity of the visualization or analytics specialist. Someone like me, someone like you, uh, who has to take a call? What is the best way to show this information? So this is where we can change it. And these are the Tableau, all Tableau is telling that these are the different options you have for, for viewing this data, the, the, the data which you pulled on the visualization. Okay. I, you know, someone may like this data. I don't know. So someone may like someone may like this data. Someone may like, no, no, nobody's gonna like that. But yeah, someone will like this data, like you asked for this. This is this may be intuitive to someone. I mean, it is honestly bar charts are very intuitive. Like the, those are the backbones for visualization because because humanly we are always someone is taller. You know, just make him stand next to somebody else. You know, we so we can always see the, oh who is taller, who is who is not who is the shorter. So it's a human tendency, and the best thing we learn in visualization is the best the humans are very good in comparing the lens. That's the that's the thing which comes to humans easily. So that's the, which is why we see lots of bar chart. And what happens is now you see this little option, you can always swap them. You can change X to Y, Y to X. All right. So this is uh, this is uh, this is yearly sales versus profit. And uh, you know. Just for the sake of doing it, why don't we bring category to it? I'll bring category to it. Yeah. So what happens now? When I brought category to it, and I'm gonna take profit out. What happens now? So I have brought category. So now it's just telling me for furniture. This is the sales trend. For office supplies, I took a fee. So the, the the fields which I have on the chart are time, date, sales, and category. Category on color, sales on row, year on column, and this is how it plots. So you can say that, so which is the most selling category, you know, for, for in 2018? You know, I think 
you know, it's obvious that in this is 2018, most selling was technology. Uh, it wouldn't surprise me because you know, products expensive. Uh, so this is this could be one discovery somebody was trying to uh, trying to make. Okay, and uh, you see, uh, and if you see in 2015, the least selling category was office supplies, but in 2019, a 2018, office supply has come a spot up. Now it's the second most selling category. It could be no, it could be. It could be subcategory. We could do it by subcategory. I took on so now it could be subcategory. Now you may be thinking there are so many lines in there, it's so dirty. Yeah, that's a bad visualization. People are so the principle is that if you have more than seven items on color, that's wrong. You should not be doing it. Uh, because humans cannot really, you cannot really differentiate now. I mean, how can you differentiate which one is which? I mean, there, there is a color legend, but it's just nearly impossible. Maybe this is not the right visual for that. Maybe there's something else for this. Uh, you know, maybe maybe this is the visual for that. So now this is, these, are, these are the decisions you take, and maybe this is not the way. I mean, you need to add a filter for this. You can't show it for all. You can show it for all uh you know you can't really drag it to color so what happens is if you want to look at category all categories combined here if you uncheck it you want to look at only phone you can just look at phone what i did is i just added so anything you want to drill down you can add that to subcategory i just brought it down to filter shelf that's all that's all i did so you can paper you can select it will keep adding to that Users can select, you can select however you want to do. Okay. All right, so, uh, so but, but again, to our original question, those were just, uh, you know, just that, you know, uh, added information. Uh, and then uh, we, what we were doing is we were doing the sales uh, and we were doing the profits. So this is where I plan to end. So I just wanna go, I wanna make it, Maybe this oh, color. To add a line in bar chart. Uh, yes, so you can add a line in bar chart. So, for example, uh, you know, uh, in sales, I will. Okay, let me show sales in bar. Okay, so sales in bar and the profit in line, and I will make it dual axis. So this could be one way of looking at it. Actually, uh, I can make it. Sorry. Yeah, I'll just shake it to discrete. It will be much, much better. I will explain in discrete and continuous those things also. So you see, you can add a line to. So, so that's a good question. Very good question for those who ask. So, whenever you want to see line in line, uh, bar in line, bar in bar, bar with a donut, bar with something else. You know, all you're talking for a dual axis chart in Tableau. So you build two different charts and you overlap them. That's how you make those. So this is actually two different charts. So if you see, if I uncheck, see these are the two different charts. This is profit, this is uh, sales. All I did is I went to dual axis. That's all, that's how you do it. All right, so so today what we are, we are seeing is building blocks. We are not seeing, the, so I can, so, so for example, these three charts we built, and there's a dashboard here. Can you see dashboards? I can get all those three charts together here. I'll get rid of this one. Okay, and I can see this, select this product. Oh, use a filter, I can select this product. For this product, what's the sales over time? For this product, what's the sales over time? See. Now you can individually see sales over time, sales profit for all these products. And this could be, you know, just a basic, but this could be, a, you know, uh, I mean, we could enhance it for sure and build a very nice fancier dashboard. And now then we will see all the layout option, all different storytelling, all different elements of that. See, these are the different objects in a dashboard. We will cover this in the next class. And then that's when we will do a dashboard. So I will give you use case, we will do, so it will be only about building an end product, actually. It will be basic, but at least it will give an idea because idea is to give end-to-end -end information. 
So all of you can go back and spend time and uh, learn based on whatever time availability you have, but at least you get an idea about the end-to-end -end delivery, though it's a very basic delivery. Okay. All right. So I think that is it. Uh, any more questions? We'll see that. Just, just don't worry about the dashboard yet. Just worry about those three sheets which we did. That's all. Don't worry about publishing and anything. We'll cover that. Questions, comments? Uh, I hope the pace was okay. And if there is some feedback on the pace, please tell let me know so that I can account for that in tomorrow's uh, session. Tomorrow we will build our dashboard. So we'll combine these sheets together and build a small story actually. Yeah. All right then. And if somebody missed to install uh, desktop or something, can always spend time. And at least now you know you can connect to your spreadsheet and you can play around if you get some time okay. and ask me questions tomorrow. Uh, there are a few questions that I I mean, like I did not ask, ask in between. Mm -hmm. Our numbers are different with the data we got in the new version of Tableau. That's someone was saying that. Uh, that's possible. That's possible. Because. Mm -hmm. uh, Sorry, sir, carry on. Because that could be that could be you 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 just the one which you downloaded uh, is a higher one and maybe they updated the sample uh, sample store data. It's fine. I mean, it's we are, for now what we're not doing is we're not trying to tally the numbers. Uh, the idea is to understand how the product works actually. Yeah. I cannot find tab py in connectors. How to access it? Uh, cannot find what? Tab py. That's what it says. TAB capital PY. Tab Pi connector, okay. Okay. Uh, so that's a different story. I will tell you, I will, that, that I will cover uh, tomorrow because now you're trying to probably, I mean, I think idea is to connect with the Python script. Is that what you're trying to do? And one more, can we create hierarchies or show already existing hierarchies in report? Absolutely. See, this is a, this is a, this is a, uh, you see, this is a, let me see if there is a hierarchy which they built in this or we can build our own. But they haven't built, yeah, you can build your custom hierarchies uh, in Tableau and you can also use the hierarchies you have in the data, actually. Yes. Yes, uh, we can, We can. I will give an example when we do the dashboard, yes. Yeah, so far the, those are the only questions that I've got. Okay. Yeah, tap I, I mean, I, I can follow up. So did, did that answer your tap by question? Because uh, what are you trying to do? And any complex questions, any very specific questions based on your need, I mean, there's a WhatsApp group already, so you can always pitch in there. I think uh, I think it's, it's it's time. So unless uh, yeah, unless uh, you know we have something, uh, we have some more questions, so we can uh, call it off. Yeah. Uh, someone was also asking, can you please show how to merge charts? How to merge charts? Chats. Oh yeah, yeah. So you go. So for so charts, you merge is in dashboard. Uh, do you mean merging two charts like dual axis or uh, or merging showing them together here? I mean, just merging could mean anything actually. So, uh, so if you were talking about today's thing, then I brought sales here and then I brought profit here. Okay, and I sorry just to minimize. Okay. And then I do a line, and what I do is okay. I'm just gonna color this orange. So how, so now you have two charts. What you do is go to second one, the second one, and click click dual axis. That's how you merge. And then uh, on the same and the axis of second one, go and synchronize the axis. That's all. It's a two step process. You build two different charts. Second chart, which you want to merge. I mean, actually it could be any chart, but ideally the Tableau, how it does is that you pick the second chart to choose dual axis and then synchronize that. There are two steps to merge the chart. Dual axis, synchronize step, if this is the question. Otherwise, merging all these charts, showing them all together is on dashboard actually. Okay. And regarding the Tableau, I mean, uh, TabPy, 
Mm-hmm. Uh, it is like Tableau Python integrator. That's what they were asking. Yeah, yeah, that's what. So I think what you're telling is that I, I think then I got it. So what happens is that uh, Tableau Py, uh, you know, a uh, TabPy is a library which you can use, uh, you know, Python to connect with uh, Tableau. So uh, that's not really in scope of this uh, training, but if there are some advanced training, I will definitely cover it in thoroughly uh, in detail. Uh, but uh, you know, uh, I will cover. I will give some indication how. Uh, those scripts will fit in. So if you just, for example, if you see, uh, because right now we look, we, it's not a Python course, it's a Tableau course. So you can see this, and you can see in this, you can see uh, script. So this is a script expression where you can integrate your R expressions and Python. And you can so you can make a call to a Python script, and you can get the data and visualize here. This is this is the only thing which we're going to see tomorrow, uh, but TabPy integration is is actually out of scope. But the, the answer is uh, yes. I mean, you can connect uh, from Python to a uh, Tableau server. Yes. Yeah. So far, that's it. I mean, they were asking what is WhatsApp group. Uh, I guess it's the same WhatsApp group that called that. Yeah, that yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yes. absolutely. Or you can reply to this email or whatever. I mean, I can, I can, you know, answer and reply to answer whatever email invitation you want. I mean, however, Mahesh, I mean, I, I leave it to you. How if people have some questions, they can ask me. How yes. you want to do it? Then you can, you can, you can. You must be having some channel for that. Yeah. I mean, I can say any questions regarding this session. You can always send it to networking at pamten dot com by just putting the subject as Pampton, I mean, like uh, Tableau questions, so that I can send them, forward them back to Anand so that he can address them tomorrow. But my only request is please do try today so that we can use our time tomorrow creatively. And it's a, it's an easy subject to start, but it's it, the impact of this work is huge on business. It's a very business critical application. And it it's it's an amazing thing if you have this in skill set. I mean, uh, it will help you a great deal actually. All right then. Uh, time up. Thank you, Anuj, and thank you all for joining. This is a very good session, Anuj.